Hi there, Bree Cunningham here with Code Technology. I am at the OVBC conference uh, the, in 2020 here interviewing Jack Davis. Jack, thank you so much for the opportunity. So Jack is a, a, a nurse. He's got his a master's in nursing. He works at HSS. He has been at HSS for how many years? 40. 40, which is absolutely amazing. HSS is a, a world-renowned organization that is an absolute powerhouse when it comes to publishing. Um, and, um, and Jack's uh, journey there has been um, from bedside nurse to a leadership role, which we're going to talk more about. Jack is also the current president of the National Association of Orthopedic nurse, uh, Nurses, which is, which is so, so huge. I'm a nurse myself, love uh, talking with other nurses. So Jack, I actually would like to start there. When it comes to your role as a president of this amazing organization, um, tell me about your goals and what you're hoping to accomplish underneath your reign. So, Neon, uh, I've been in the role now for, it's a three-year term, so president-elect, president, and past president. So this is my presidential year. So being a, a, an a experienced nurse with HSS for 40 years, it, a lot of synergy with Neon and HSS were dedicated to improve uh, patient care through research, practice, and education. So my role in, in Neon, the, my presidential theme is engage your core, which is the tagline that I wanted to use. And it's really trying to engage others to become more involved in their orthopedic specialty. We have approximately 5,500 orthopedic nurses around the country, wow. around the world, who are dedicated their practice and their specialty of orthopedics. So. We've seen a little bit of a dip in some of our like other organizations and membership, so I'm trying to engage them to become more active. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So becoming more active could be just attending sessions, reading the journal, participating in posters, trying to get sure. them more professional. And I've learned that through my experience with HSS as well. So there's a lot of synergy in what I've done for the last 40 years, what I've been exposed to, and how I want to get people engaged in their professional mm -hmm. activities. So I, I'm sure you would love to see more, uh, more nurses at conferences like this and more members of your organization attending things. Yeah. this. You know, this is my first time attending this. I mean, this is a great example of interprofessional collaboration and education. And it's great to see everybody at the same table talking about, you know, the anesthesiologist and the surgeon talking about how they can get uh, patients from the uh, inpatient population to ambulatory. But it's really important that you have a nurse and rehab and other disciplines at the table mm -hmm. making decisions. The nurses are the ones who are there 24-7. They need to know how to prepare the patient, how to manage new technologies in, this, in the OR as well as anesthesia, mm -hmm. how to teach patients how to manage pain, how to assess pain when you have or, or movement and sensation after these great new techniques are implemented. So nurses really have to be at the table to share with their counterparts mm -hmm. some of the challenges that they have in practice. Mm -hmm. So that tagline, engage your core, is core an acronym or when you say core, are you saying your core nursing team? Tell me more so about how you it, came it up was, with that. It was, uh, I was at a leadership uh, training as part of my uh, development and lead into the presidential year, year and, you know, the leadership training, if you want to have somebody follow you, you have to come up with some kind of, you know, easy remembering uh, tagline, sort of, you know, short, sweet, and get people behind it. So I learned that, you know, engage your core can be many reasons, you know, many uh, definitions behind it. So it's it's purposefully ambiguous. So engage your core, to me, could be engage your core in orthopedics, right? Your abdominal core to prevent injury. So you can have nurses become more uh, in tune with their own health status. But engage your core team, like getting members of your team to use best practices that are developed in the NAON side of things to engage them to use it. Or engage your core um, um, team to join the National Association of Orthopedic Nurses or to do more research or to do, use metrics that can be, again, transferred back over to NAON. Mm -hmm. So multiple purposes and reasons. People are coming up with new you know, interpretations of it. So it's mm -hmm. purposely designed that way. I love it. I think it's very, very clever. Right. And I've remembered it. <laughs> it looks good on a, uh, you know, when we're trying to promote our, uh, our meeting in May, it looks good. It's a nice little catchphrase. It really is. Are, yeah. It really is. Yeah. Um, you know, you made a comment today that really got the room talking during one of your, your presentation, and that was related to standardizing protocols mm. amongst your surgeons. 
<laughs> so in your position, that, that's huge for what you do. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you've been able to utilize nurses as kind of that front line to help change physician behavior and just team behavior? So again, it's, it's the collaborative seat at the table where you, you know, surgeons, again, I work in an institution where for total joint replacement, there might be 35 surgeons doing the same surgery. We do a lot of research and so some people have different, you know, criteria during, during the episode of care that they want to implement. But it gets so diverse, you can have 30 different ways to manage pain, for example. Mm. And then the nursing staff is, is, is there to try to sort of un, untangle the mess of this is this doctor who's ordering this. So it's not standardized. And then that, that, uh, that delivery of that message can sometimes get confusing. So you, you don't want to, you know, you can have a protocol and you're following protocols, but if you have a different medication for 30 different surgeons, the message gets sort of watered down mm -hmm. and it can lead to inconsistencies. And then the patients don't trust the provider because they're hearing things from you versus somebody else. It just, it just really muddies the water. Mm -hmm. So having the nurses part of the team to try to standardize and talk about the challenges of, of too many different variations is important for the surgeons to hear it. And that I think has, has pulled people together to try to standardize as much as possible. It doesn't always work, but it's, it's, it's a good voice from the nursing side to tell them some of the challenges that result in it. And I don't think the surgeons know it. I mean, we do service-based, so we have 30 surgeons for the ARJ, or we just pull them and they didn't realize how many differences they had for dressings, wow. for DVT prophylaxis, for pain management. Once they saw it, then they sort of came to this senses and try to standardize. Still not 100%, but it's getting closer. Right. So sharing that data and being transparent, making that information available led to be, uh, a change in behavior. Right. And just, wow. you know, and, and patient complaints. So they would get feedback and the doctors would come back to nurse and say, how come you guys not telling them this? And we're like, well, because we didn't know that's what you're doing and other people are doing something differently. So you have to try to give us a you know hand in trying to give the same message that we can make sure that we're getting the right information to the right patient. Love it. You know, Jack, my final question here is, is you're passionate about getting nurses involved in professional organizations um, and, and in leadership roles. And you went from PACU nurse to, you know, the prestigious mm -hmm. role that you're in now. Give me a couple reasons where, you know, it, as a new bedside nurse, why it's important to be involved in organizations um, like the one you lead. It's really about your own uh, uh protection of your license and trying to make an impact on, on the patients that you care for. So belonging to an organization really gives you access to the current best practices, the education that supports your practice at the bedside. And then I was actually introduced to it just, I worked for a surgeon and he was like, you should go. He supported it. So it was actually mm -hmm. a surgeon who supported the nurse to try to move on. And once I got there and saw the other thousand people at this conference, it really gave me a, you know, really empowered me and motivated me to participate in that. And then it's just the same thing. I get the most, most rewarding response I get now is encouraging and mentoring staff to get up there in front of their peers and presenting something on the work that they've done. And it makes, makes me proud and you can see that it makes them proud to be sharing that. I love it. That's awesome. Well, I'm so excited for Engage Your Core and there to follow the progress of your organization. Thank you Great. so much for being here sure. at this conference and for allowing us the opportunity to interview you, Jack. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.